In this episode, I'm going to talk about leg yields. I'll discuss why you want to do them and the most important reason for doing them that most people actually don't realize. So here we go. Episode 63, Leg Yields. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. So for this episode, I wanted to do something a little bit technical. The last few episodes, I've been getting a little philosophical and very much about mindset. And, you know, we have to go there because that's always important. But I thought I'd refresh a little bit and talk about an actual dressage movement and uh, leg yields. I guess I should describe it for those of you who maybe are not necessarily dressage riders or coming in. It's a lateral movement. And um, what it looks like is the horse is basically straight. There's no bend. uh, And they're moving usually parallel to a long side where they're moving forward and sideways, either away from the wall towards the center of the arena or from the center line or quarter line uh, forward and sideways parallel to the long side and moving towards the long side. You can also do a variation where the nose is to the wall and you're going along the long side with the rear end away from the wall and the nose is looking at the wall, which is called a nose to the wall (laughs) leg yield. So like I said, their horse is basically straight. There's only a slight positioning away from the direction of travel. And the front end and the back end are moving sideways the same amount. Now it's not directly sideways. It travels forward and sideways. So the one of the first things to know about a leg yield is it's a non-dramatic movement. Now, of course, it can be dramatic in its beauty and effortlessness and consistency of balance and freedom within the leg yield. So those sorts of things would make a, a leg yield go, ooh, that's beautiful. But it's not a movement that's meant to end up being dramatic, such as, you know, half pass. There's um, there's half passes in, that are sort of baby half passes in third level where you take a long time forward to get a little bit sideways, and then you can increase the degree of difficulty of a half pass. For example, in Grand Prix, where you're, you know, you're cutting, you have to get all the way across the arena in only half the length of the arena, or a little less than that, actually. Uh, so that's where a half pass can be a more dramatic movement. And this is important to know because the beauty and the elegance and the benefit of a leg yield is in keeping it simple and not overdoing it. So I want to talk a little bit more about what it looks like and what we're doing in our bodies. And then I'll kind of go into what, you know, why, (laughs) why are you doing it? So it's a little bit like the difference between the essence and the criteria. So I want to talk about the criteria. The criteria is what makes you recognize it, right? So if, if you know the criteria of a leg yield, then if someone does one, you can go, oh, look, that's a leg yield. (laughs) Or more importantly, if you're doing it and you're meeting the criteria, it makes it a recognizable movement. Somebody watching could go, she's doing a leg yield. All right. So let's uh, pretend that you're all, you just turned on to the long side. You're going track left and you're on the short side. You make a left-hand turn through the corner. Now you're at the beginning of the long side and you're going to do a leg yield to the left away from the wall. Now here's something that gets confusing because some people describe it differently. In that scenario I just told you, 
where you're turning left, the wall is on the right side, you just turned onto the long side, and I'm going to do a leg yield to the left. And I would call that a leg yield left because you're going to the left. Some people would call that a right leg yield. <laughs> and it makes sense because your horse is yielding away from your right leg. So they would call it a right leg yield, and I would call it a leg yield left. <laughs> Good luck out there. <laughs> anyway, so if you're, you know, that only, you know, usually you kind of know what it means unless you have an instructor that goes, go down center line, and then they say it and you're like, oh, I could go each way. Which one should I do? So don't be afraid to ask your instructor a question. <laughs> Which way do you mean to go? All right, so back to where I was describing. You're tracking left around the arena. You just turned the corner left. You're on the long side. The wall is on your right, and you've got that long side ahead of you, and you're going to do a leg yield to the left. So the horse is going to remain parallel to the wall that you're on, parallel to the long side, which is also parallel to the quarter line and the center line. And you're going to shift your weight your center of gravity towards the left because that's where you want your horse to go. And it's a good general rule of thumb to keep your center of gravity going the same direction as your horse. So ideally, the aid for the leg yield is you change your line of direction, your focus, and you, without changing anything else, you shift your center of gravity towards the direction you want to go. Now, your weight will then end up going from right to left, so some people will say you need to put weight in your left stirrup. Some people will say you need to drop your right leg and put weight in your right seat bone. Each of those could be true, depending on the horse. What everybody has to do is take your center of gravity and move it diagonally from the right to the left. And so what I mean by the, you know, is it weight in their left stirrup? Is it weight in your right seat bone. Mechanically, when the horse reaches under their body to step sideways with that, in this case, the right hind leg, that right hip of the horse will drop. Your right hip and seat bone will drop accordingly if you're sitting with your horse. And so you will feel that right seat bone go down and engage. However, you don't want to be falling off the right side. Or you're going to pull your horse back to the right. So you do need, as you move your center of gravity to the left, you will feel uh, more weight going down towards that left stirrup. So that's what I mean is you, you will feel allowing your weight to go to the left. On the other hand, you have to allow your, that inside hip, your inside hip to follow your horse's inside hip as it drops. And you want to keep those balanced. And depending on the horse, one horse I might ride when I remind myself, hey, remember Karen, really step into that left stirrup because that's what that horse needs the most. And another horse in the same exact leg yield in the same exact place in the arena, I might have to think, hey, remember Karen to drop, you know, relax my right hip and let that drop and engage. So depending on what my body tends to do and what that horse's body tends to do, you might have to remind yourself of one of those things, the weight in the stirrup of the direction you're going, or that uh, hip on the leg that's going sideways. So in this case, in the leg yield left, the right, your right seat bone dropping. You might have to remind yourself of one or the other of those. Um, if you're really contorted, you might have to remind yourself of both of those things. But no matter what, every horse, if you're going to leg yield to the left, you're going to have to shift your center of gravity and your line of direction, your focus diagonally to the left in the direction you're going. Oof, I hope I didn't make that confusing. All right, so what do we do with our hands and what do we expect of the horse's neck? The whole body is going to remain parallel to the out, that outside wall. But when you shift your weight and the horse hopefully shifts his center of gravity also, that's going to create a positioning. Now, it's not something created with your hands. 
Maybe you use your reins for one of those three purposes of the reins and you use your reins to do a subtle positioning and suggestion with your hands. But most of the positioning in the horse's body is going to be through your weight shift. And remember, you're sitting on the middle of the horse. So if you if the horse is straight and then you move the middle slightly over to the left, then you'll be able to see a little peak of the horse's right eye. And that's going to help him move or her <laughs> move their their weight diagonally towards the left. So keep or keep I'm going to continue using the leg yield left example. And so but what you you don't really want to do much with your hands. So here's a little thing you can do as a simulation if you're able uh, to stand up. This will be easier, but if you're sitting, if you're driving and listening to this, you can probably do this too. Uh, carefully, safety first. But if you're sitting or standing and you have your arms down, uh, just lightly touching your side like you would if you were riding, and now just move without moving your arms relative to the ground, just shift your weight. So if we're doing a leg yield left, when you start, you can lightly feel your rib cage against the inside of your right and left arm. Now take your rib cage with your seat, take your seat and let the rib cage come with it over to the left, but don't move your arms relative to the ground. So now you're going to notice that you're kind of snuggled up against your left arm and there's maybe a little more space between your ribs and your inside of your right arm. That's it. That's the degree of positioning. And so if you imagine your horse's middle doing the same thing and their head stays in the same place and their middle shifts over a little bit towards the direction they're going, now your van from your vantage point you'll be able to see a little peak of the inside eye. So you want to know that because every now and then you have a horse who, because of their crookedness or something, wants to look in the direction they're going and that's going to make it harder. So you, that's where you can use your reins to suggest to the horse that they're basically straight with their neck and their head, but you want to end up with maybe a little tweak so you can see um, that right eye or the right nostril. Okay, so we have that picture. Horse is basically straight. There's a slight shift of weight in the center of gravities of both you and your horse. And now the horse in every step goes diagonally a little bit forward, a little bit sideways. And the front and the back end are moving forward and sideways exactly the same amount. And so that's the criteria. So if you see something like that happening, that is a leg yield. And once you're familiar enough with what that criteria is and how you want that to feel, sometimes horses have an easier time um, leg yielding away from the wall. Other horses have an easier time leg yielding towards the wall. And some horses have an easier time leg yielding with their nose to the wall. So um, this is another good thing to know you know, with dressage naturally, I'm really into experimentation. Uh, well, there's a reason why there's different uh, places in the arena where you can do a leg yield. And that reason is because it's easier for some horses. So when I'm teaching a horse or trying to learn and exercise myself for the first time, I'll, I want to know my options because sometimes just trying the same exercise in a different place in the arena can make all the difference in the world. So if you're doing down quarter line and leg yield towards the wall and you're struggling a little bit, you know, you're a lot of people will do a leg yield left by going track right and then going down the center line or the far quarter line. And then from there doing a leg yield to the left towards the wall. And that's different than how I told you going track left when you get on the beginning of the long side, then you leg yield over. There, Once you're in the leg yield, it's the exact same movement. You could also do the leg yield left going track left. And then when you're on the long side, you kind of kick the rear, well, not kick, but you know what I mean? You move, you yield the hindquarters away from the long side till they're pointing kind of diagonally looking outside the arena and then you continue down the long side with a straight horse. So once you understand the criteria, 
and you understand that those are three main places where you could do a leg yield, I, I usually experiment and I try one, I try the other, I try the other. And whichever one feels the easiest for the horse and me, for whatever reason, that's the one I want to master first. So you want to find the easiest circumstance to be successful. So there's a little, write that one down because that you can generalize to other exercises too. I do this all the time. Understand the movement, know what it looks like, know the criteria. What are the things on the checklist that makes you go, yeah, that's what it is. Then look at the different options. Where could you do it in the arena and do the easiest one get great at the, at it in the easy circumstance. Then now that you have your skills and you're confident, you can try it in other areas. So another exercise that I do this a lot with is in learning shoulder in. Usually the first shoulder ins that I do are always counter shoulder ins because counter shoulder ins are just easier. It's a much better setup for success. And then once my horse and I are good at that biomechanical movement, then I can try doing a shoulder in, in lots of, lots of other different circumstances. Okay. So we kind of know the aids for the leg yield. We, we kind of know what it looks like and we know some different places in the arena that we could do it. That's sort of the first checklist. Make sure you can, you know, tick off those boxes and meet the criteria. Now, why do you want to do a leg yield? And you know, it there's <laughs> leg yields are sort of funny because there's, you know, debates. There, there's people who will debate the um, value of a leg yield. There's actually anti-leg yield people out there, which just baffles me. <laughs> and I guess it's not really a classical lateral position because it's different than the other lateral movements in dressage in that it does not have bend, right? So shoulder in, haunches in, counter shoulder in, rom bears, all of those half pass, <laughs> all of those have bend, but leg yield doesn't. So I don't know, maybe that's why some people don't like leg yields because they don't have bend. But here's, here's the benefit. Leg yield is such a, a basic movement and it really is a great way to introduce the idea of the horse moving diagonally from that inside hind towards the outside shoulder. So many of you have taken dressage lessons and or listened to dressage lessons and you keep hearing inside leg to outside rein. <laughs> you know, what is this inside leg to outside rein? Well, what better movement than a leg yield? to get that feeling because the hind, the, that hind leg literally is going diagonally across the body towards the outside shoulder. And then the outside, your outside hand kind of regulates. So it's a great movement to start introducing that concept of moving diagonally through the body without needing to be able to bend. Now, one of the, um, <laughs> one of the tricky parts about leg yield is, is the simplicity of it. So when I'm watching leg yields, what I'm really looking for, once I know a horse and rider understand it, they've muddled through and they can meet the criteria. What I'm really looking for is no contortion and that they can move the front end and the hind end equally the same amount forward and sideways and a very narrow leg yield, a leg yield that takes the whole length of the arena to only get from the wall to quarter line, but done really well, really consistent, consistently with flow and balance and no contortion is hugely valuable. It's much more valuable than a leg yield that tries to go too sharply across the arena with either the front end or the hind end uh, dragging or leading. So when you're doing this as a rider, what you want to feel is that, that you can find a rhythm within it, that it can flow. And the reality is 
many horses have a tendency to either get to the wall with their shoulder too fast or their haunches too fast or with their shoulder dragging or their haunches dragging. So there's a couple ways that you can um, be, well, there's lots of ways to do it wrong. <laughs> so let's say we're in that leg yield left again. So picture you've just turned on to the long side. The wall is on your right. You're going to leg yield left. You could have a horse that flies over there with the shoulder and the haunches are kind of left in the dust, but the horse is really eager to go. And in this case, the horse is probably over bending his neck to the right. So in that case where the shoulder falls to the inside, in order to be successful, you need to use your outside hand like a joystick coming out of that left shoulder to make the shoulder wait a little bit. So a lot of times people will try to get the haunches to catch up and then the shoulder just goes faster. <laughs> so if the shoulder's flying over there, then use your left hand in this case, just to kind of very subtly, um, number one, not allow the neck to overbend. So just don't give. And then kind of, I kind of press my hand towards the withers just to close that door, put the brakes a little bit on that shoulder and say, shoulder, wait a second till the haunches can catch up. And if that little, uh, if that little suggestion doesn't work, then I'll halt. I'll say shoulders stop <laughs> and then yield the hind end over a couple strides to let it catch up and then allow the shoulder to go again. Now, if you just let go with that left hand, the shoulders is going to fall again. So again, think of that a little joystick sticking up out of the shoulder and you're doing these little tiny moves little tiny ones against that shoulder to try to figure out how much of the shoulder have to wait. Now you could also have a horse that comes on the long side, you start to leg yield and their haunches fly over there <laughs> and their haunches are going to get to the, you know, to the mark first. And you don't want that either because now, now you're not parallel, right? The haunches are going too far. So in that case, you have to check yourself. Is it because you're shutting the door too much on the shoulder and you actually have to open the door with your left hand a little bit? I mean, it's almost going to be isometric. You don't really move. Just allow that shoulder to come. Or are you just working so hard because someone told you it was a leg yield, so you're supposed to put your leg on and you're over pushing. And then you can just take your right leg off a little bit and say, whoa, I don't, I don't actually need to push so much. And again, to go back to that horse where you start the leg yield left, maybe you start to leg yield and the haunches really just don't go at all. That the, the haunches are dragging. So the shoulders are getting there first, but not because the shoulders are so ambitious or they're falling. Maybe the shoulders are in really good balance, but the haunches are really just that inside hind leg is not doing its job, that right hind leg. In which case you're going to have to add some leg but it's all in relationship. So as you shift your weight, your center of gravity, ideally the whole horse comes over, but in reality, one end is going to try to get there before the other, or one end is going to try to drag. And so you have your outside hand. That's the hand that's opposite to the way he's positioned. So remember in a leg yield left, you're seeing a little of the right eye. So the left hand is your outside hand, no matter where in the arena you are. I want to write that one down. <laughs> but in this case of the leg yield left, my left hand has the little joystick in it and it's monitoring how much the door is open or closed for the shoulder. And then my right leg is there to maybe get a little more responsiveness from the hind end if I need it. And then it goes down. And remember, because there's no bend, our, both of our legs, our legs should be hanging pretty much straight down. Or if anything, you're in your right leg at the girth. And so this is another case to really check yourself that you're not being really asymmetrical. Your goal is to have your legs down and have your horse go from your seat. That is definitely easier said than done in many cases. So this is a great time to get really precise with your position. Make this very simple movement 
be easy. And again, like I said earlier, watch out for contortion. Because the horse is meant to be straight, any little contortion is going to really stand out. And that is a gift. Because in all the other lateral movements that have bend, shoulder in, haunches in, rhombares, half pass, counter shoulder in, all of those have bend. And contortion can kind of sneak in those positions and it's harder to see. So it's much easier to see a twist or a tilt or something bending in a leg yield. It's harder to see a bend in a, in the wrong place. So sometimes in a shoulder in, for example, or a haunches in, your horse will be bending, but not in the right place. <laughs> So it can sneak in there. It's like, well, it looks like it has a bend, but the bend is too much in the upper part of the neck instead of in the body. And what does it really mean to bend the body? It gets a little more complicated and it can sort of look right, but, but get harder to pinpoint exactly where the um, alignment problem is. In a leg yield, because it needs to be parallel, because the hind end and the front end need to go the exact same amount, and because there's no bend, if something's bending, it really sticks out. If something's tilting, you can get little tilted heads a lot in leg yields. You can get riders tilting, riders twisting. There's no bend. You and your horse should, you should be straight up and down. Your horse should be straight from back to front, and it's just the body stay the same and just the legs cross and uncross and cross and uncross. So that's the simplicity of the leg yield. That's also the challenge of the leg yield, but it is the beauty and the benefit of the leg yield. I love leg yields, if you can't tell. <laughs> and so some of my favorite exercises, once you have leg yields going, is to do this leg yield away from the wall and you move over until you are at the center line if you're in a dressage arena or you know around 10 meters away from the wall so that you leg yield away from the wall until there's room to make a half a circle like a half a small circle when you're at the other end to put you on the long side again going the other direction and then as soon as you're on that long side, you have to change your positioning and then leg yield away from the wall again, keeping in mind that you're leg yielding in a way that you feel prepared to do a half a circle and then straight, change your positioning, leg yield away from the wall, knowing you're preparing for a circle. And those half circles and leg yields and changes of positioning right one after the other is such a, it's a not that physically demanding. It's very small, but there's a lot of coordination involved and you can really see asymmetries very easily. So that's kind of like a, in the United States, we would call that a first level kind of movement, right? One notch up from training level, nothing that involves collection yet. So it's a really nice basic exercise and it can actually help create the skills for bending and the skills for shoulder in. It kind of, you know, think of that leg yield, that inside, that one hind leg is really stepping across the body, stepping across, stepping across, stepping across. And then when you get to the end, you make that half circle and now you're bringing the shoulder around, right? So what are the ingredients of a shoulder in? Well, inside hind leg stepping under and that shoulder coming around. So when I do that leg yield to half circle to leg yield to half circle, I know I'm building the skills for my shoulder in. And then the other beauty of that is the, the quick little change of uh, positioning to go back the other way. So you don't just get stuck. You know, sometimes if you perfect one leg yield, you end up just throwing your weight that way and then it's hard to get back. <laughs> you know? So I love doing them from one to the other like that. Uh, so I'm always kind of balancing the turning with the yielding, the turning with the yielding on each side. So again, so when you head out to go play with this, 
Um, really, number one, be aware of your position when you're going straight. So take a minute to just ride around the whole arena and on the long sides, just make sure that you're looking up, you're looking straight forward, that your nose and your chest and your pelvis are all facing the same direction. And that goes for your horse too. And sometimes I'll then ride around the whole arena and I'll just practice doing that little simulation thing that I told you about where I keep my arms at my side and I just shift my ribs up against one arm and shift my ribs up against the other arm. And when I'm riding, I can do that and try to notice that it causes a slight change in positioning. It causes a weight shift. I can shift. I can shift my ribs to my right arm and I should see a little bit of the left eye. And then I can shift my ribs to my left arm and end up seeing a little bit of the horse's right eye. Not a bend, just at a, just where the head comes out of the neck, just a slight positioning and you'll feel a little weight shift. And so I'll go around the whole arena. I'll just do that. Like here's my getting ready to leg yield left position. And here's my getting ready to leg yield right position. And here's straight. And I compare those three. And they're kind of just like little ticks. You're straight. Tick to change. Shifting the weight to the left. Tick back to straight. Tick over the other direction. And just try to feel that slight, slight change without, and here's the tricky part, without the rear end swinging back and forth without your th shoulders swinging back and forth, without the neck bending, without the neck tilting, without you collapsing on one side, without you pulling one leg up or down, without you twisting, you know. <laughs> so just take your time to notice that you can do that little skill without any contortion. And if you are contorting, ask yourself, why am I doing that? Maybe you're just overworking, or maybe you're feeling your horse do something and you feel your horse leaning on one side or leaning on the other side, and you're trying to ask it to not do that and it doesn't work. So you, you want to hone your basics and go, well, this is a problem because my horse gets crooked and then I can't get the rear end back on the rail. I have to squeeze my guts out. Well, we're going to want to resolve that. <laughs> Review, tune up those yields. You want to really feel like your thighs and your pelvis are, are move, able to shift the balance of the middle of the horse. And so once you kind of get a feel of that and you're clear on positioning right, straight, positioning left, then I would suggest do, trying the leg yield away from the wall. I find with most horses, they feel feel more open to that. Number one, you have the wall right there as a really handy dandy reference. It's easy to tell if you're straight or not. Number two, as you ask them to move sideways, they've got a big open space. <laughs> There's lots of room to move and a lot of horses feel freer to move out into the open. But every now and then you're going to meet a horse that does not want to move into the open. They want to stay glued to the wall and that's when you can do the turn down the far quarter line and like you'll towards the wall and let them let their desire to be glued to the wall <laughs> help you with your leg yield. But again, try, you know, try it in different places. If one is seeming like a struggle, try it in a different circumstance. And so again, picture that you and your horse are figurines. You're like cut out of wood, one block of wood, your body, the horse's body, and the only moving parts are the horse's legs. And you, and you want to feel that the, the shoulders, you know, that front leg steps across and then the other one reaches, steps across and reaches. And the same thing with the hind leg, that hind leg steps under and then their hind leg reaches. And remember that it's better to do a really good quality leg yield and take a long time going forward to only get a little bit sideways, but with good quality, than to exaggerate and try to go too far sideways. Now there's another question that's gonna come up. If you don't already have it, you'll have it when you go up playing with your horse with this, <laughs> is what about the energy? So, you know, when you start lateral work, it's very, very common for horses to get sticky. And actually that's not fair. The horse and the rider get sticky. 
One leading cause of stickiness is the rider contorting, using both legs at once. You know, you put one leg on, you don't realize you're also putting the other leg on, and now the horse is feeling conflicted. Or you think you're shifting your weight, but you're actually leaning over back to the other direction. These are all normal things. So this is why you want to catch yourself. This is why dressage riders have mirrors. So just do a couple steps and then ride straight for, for a little bit. And so that way, if it's your own contortion, you get a chance to just clear it. So go leg yield, leg yield, straight. And make sure you can go straight as if the leg yield never happened. And then you can always restart it again. So in that straight moment is a moment to correct contortion, to kind of look up, check out where you are again. If the horse got sticky, it's a chance for you to get the energy back, take a breath, and then go again. So that's a really helpful exercise, and that follows my general guideline of any two qualities you want at the same time, alternate between them. So if you want forward and sideways, you might have to go a little sideways, then stop the sideways, go back forward, get the energy, and then go sideways. You're probably going to lose the energy, and then go back forward and just bounce between them. Don't, whatever you do, don't contort, work harder, contort more, work harder, work harder, work harder, work harder, and end up like a, I don't know, contorted, locked up pretzel woman at the end, or man at the end. And then just do that again and again. Don't do that. Sort it out. Find the source of the contortion. Don't be afraid to halt. Make adjustments. Take a breath. Start again. And, you know, you might find it's, oh, it's always this shoulder falling left or, it's, oh, it's the right hind that's always the sticky one or whatever. You'll, you'll find out lots of stuff. But I hope you do play with this. I mean, leg yield is just such a great exercise for any rider of any discipline. And um, take your time to get it, to get it beautiful, get it beautiful and, and dramatic in its harmony and its lightness and its ease. It's a real, a real exercise for education for the horse and the rider. And uh, it's, it's worth it. There's so many good qualities that come with this. And I think uh, many people um, don't put the kind of attention that they could in a leg yield. There's so much you can do with it and so much to learn about your horse, even doing it just at the walk. And I shouldn't even say just at the walk. The walk is such a powerful gate. I love leg yields at the walk. And the walk is special because every leg moves separately, right? Every leg of the horse moves independently. There's no two legs that go at the same time. So it really gives you a chance to learn about where the horse is free, where they're a little stuck, where do they tilt, where do they twist, where do they drop, where do they drag. <laughs> and the same thing with you too. So I hope this inspires all of you guys to go out and do leg yields and uh, let me know how it goes. Let me know if it helps and uh, yeah, enjoy some beautiful, non-dramatic, non-contorted, full of ease leg yields. All right, that's it. <laughs>